we're going to be talking to Julia Seidman, who is going to be telling us about a great first chapter, new employee growth in your content pipeline, which is a new model for using technical blogging. Uh, Julia is a technical marketing consultant and developer in the Seattle area. She has two terrific kids and a wonderful partner, and her family cosplays as a normal family. Julia is a believer in the career over the rather than the career, which you can check out more by uh, more about on our virtual coffee podcast. And hopefully, we can get Julia's video up here in one second. I am pretty sure I can hear you, Julia. If you want to oh, go ahead and share oh, your slides, can you we hear can... the room by running upstairs. Is that? <laughs> don't worry about the room by you're all good so um oh what do i do uh share screen share screen <laughs> oh my gosh i'm so sorry i didn't uh, it's all right just work on getting that getting those slides up there we're super yeah. excited to hear more about technical writing you do so much of that and you've taught us a lot about it at virtual coffee um in our lunch and learns and in our breakout rooms all and right. all the stuff that you do um, at the tech interview study group uh, oh i see slides. Hi. Hey, there we go okay i guess i don't know why we're not going to see me but that's okay my hair is still wet so we'll just see my slides and that's fine so um i I have been kicking this idea around for a while um, that kind of ties together a bunch of different aspects of my <laughs> eclectic professional background. And I, it's something that I potentially um, would like to turn into like a consulting thing of my own. And so I thought as a first step, I'd try presenting the idea to all of you and see what you think. So with that, a great first chapter, new employee growth and your content pipeline. So I want to first set up a problem space here. There's two problems that are going to seem unrelated to each other. Um, and those are, first of all, a problem that is going to feel familiar to many of us, and that is um, that onboarding into to, into a new role as a developer kind of sucks. It's a you are really excited about getting your first, you know, getting this new job. You're pumped to join the team. You think they make cool products. You you you're excited to learn some new tools. And you spend the first few weeks just disoriented and bewildered and overwhelmed and feeling like you're not producing anything and nobody knows what you're doing with yourself. A lot of us have been there, right? And then on the other hand, um, there's this seemingly unrelated problem that I'm very familiar with because it's the kind of the space that I work in now. And that is that there's a huge demand for quality technical content. And I, I want to, I want to emphasize that like what I'm talking about is technical content created by developers, people who are genuinely knowledgeable about what they're, what they're talking about. There's a lot of demand for that. There's a lot of people who want to learn and there's a lot of crap out there. Um, but the people who have the knowledge typically don't have the time or maybe don't have the skills. And maybe if they have some of the skills and some of the time, it's still not enough to get something all the way to publication. So, I had an idea. I have an idea for something that potentially, I can't believe the room is doing this right now, um, potentially could improve both of these issues at the same time. I've been a new employee. Now I'm a developer education consultant. Um, and I have an idea. So here's my proposal. We've 
we're probably all kind of familiar with the idea of the like day one read me PR where, you know, someone says like, okay, here's the read me for this project file. Oh my God, I am so sorry, but the <laughs> I think it's done. Um, here's the read me, here's the project, install this, do this, do that, read this documentation. And it, over the course of the day, you know, you're kind of wading your way through and you find some small error in the readme and you make a PR and you're like, yeah, I, I contributed something today. But that's, it's kind of a small win. Um, and I have a feeling that it's something we could turn into a set of much bigger wins by, by making that written component of employee onboarding a more formalized program um, that would come with benefits for other people involved in your technical organization too. Managers who currently have to sort of like hope and pray that their new employees are learning the things they're supposed to learn, meeting the benchmarks they're supposed to meet for a while. Those managers um, gain much, could gain, gain much greater insight into what new employees are doing, what they're learning, um, where their potential strengths are, where they maybe need some more support. And DevRel and marketing teams could potentially gain a new source of that authentic technical content by actually codifying some expectations for content production for new employees. So um, if we're going to make this work, um, there are a few things that you have to have. One of them is flexible objectives. The primary goal, if you were to implement this kind of program, has to be about employee growth. And um, I, I actually love Taiwo's talk earlier about self-reflection. The power of self-reflection to spur growth is enormous. That is really at the root of this program. Written self-reflection is more powerful than virtually anything else proven by research in all different domains, all different ages of learners. So really our, our main goal is to enrich the experience of individual new employees so that they can build on their strengths and learn to do their jobs more effectively. The written communication is a job requirement. They, the, if you're following this program, they've got to do the writing, but that's not the job. So you're not going to be evaluating them on the quality of their writing. Not every employee is going to write stuff that gets published, and that's fine. They can still learn from it. You also have to have clear expectations. Um, it can't just be keep a journal of what's going on this week there would need to be appropriately determined objectives for individual employees um, and different expectations at different job levels. Um, the expectations of somebody who's coming in um, at a higher a technical level are going to be different than somebody who's coming in as a junior. And then if you want to get the benefit of this, pro of this type of program for your DevRel and marketing teams, you would need to provide some level of ongoing support. You do not want to set your employee, new employees up to embarrass themselves with content that's not really ready for publication. Um, and so you would need to commit to some level of ongoing professional editing support to kind of take the content that's produced through this program and kind of put it over the edge. So I want to compare um, two, just to kind of illustrate how this would work. Um, we have a hypothetical new employee named Alex, and I'm going to just quickly go through two different versions of Alex's first month on the job. Alex is a new 
junior developer. They have a couple years of experience in support. Um, they wrote for a college newspaper, have a Twitch stream. You know, we don't know a whole lot about Alex. They seem like they're going to be a good candidate, like a good new employee. They've got a lot of energy. <laughs> Alex. Um, so Alex comes in on the first day and gets this list of set yourself up with access to the API gateway, read this documentation, read that documentation, here are some training videos, install this tool, um, build this project file, here are a whole mess of readmes, and let us know if you have questions, we'll check in. There's no deliverables. There's not a lot of direction. There's not a lot of built-in reward either. It's frustrating. So a month in, Alex's team and manager, they think Alex seems pretty good, but they're not really sure. There's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of gut feelings, and not a lot of measurable results. That's a pretty standard first month for a new developer in many, many organizations. So how would that change with this great first chapter program? Well, Alex comes in, same person, but the onboarding is different. Week one, Alex gets, along with a list of all the stuff to read and um, projects to install and whatnot, also gets guidance on how to create a friction log. And a friction log is a user experience concept that just creates like a narrative record of everything that a user does when trying to use a tool. Why not do that for your new employees? Your onboarding process is a tool. How are users, your new employees, experiencing it? You could learn a lot and improve the process dramatically. And Alex gets the opportunity to feel like a meaningful contributor to the team from the very first week. Week two, Alex gets some guidance on how to, how to do some self-reflection like Taiwo was talking about. Um, and um, additionally, how, uh, how to, you know, some self-reflection, some goal setting, and has the expectation of writing a couple of informal self-reflection posts that week. And in one of those posts, Alex mentions some experience with video production. Remember, they have a Twitch screen stream. So week three comes along. Alex is doing pretty well. Manager reads that and says, hey, hey, I think it'd be terrific if you made a video about our employee on our technical onboarding process. So Alex gets to work on taking what they have learned, um, taking what they have learned from those first couple of, of weeks on the job and turning it into a video. Maybe nobody, nobody will watch it, but maybe they will. Week four, more self-reflection on those goals more journaling, and potentially a really meaningful blog post for a company website or for onboarding new employees in the future. And most importantly of all, Alex's team has much better insight into how they're doing, where their strengths are, um, and they've gained some fresh perspective on their products and their onboarding processes, um, and they have it written down. So, um, and then in that process, somebody from DevRel or marketing says, hey, Alex, we think it's really great that you have this video production experience and we know it's not your job, but maybe we could work with your manager to carve out time once a quarter for you to be involved in creating uh, some kind of video for our DevRel team. So the DevRel team gets this authentic technical content. 
somebody knowledgeable who's embedded with their technical teams on a day-to-day -day basis and who has the communication skill and the desire to be part of that process. Um, and it's a much lower cost than um, going out to uh, another company, consulting, whatever. Okay, I have to skip my timeline, but I think, um, yeah, if you have, I'd love, like I said, this is sort of a proposal for something that I, I'd like to turn into a consulting <laughs> uh, business, potentially. Um, so I would love to hear any feedback anybody has, where you would need more information, what you would want to know about. Um, yeah, so reach out to me. And thank you all very much. Thanks so much, Julia. I really love this proposal. And I know as a person in general that this is something that I think a lot of uh, think a lot about. And you gave us a lot of really good questions and ideas to think about something that I hope that we talk about a little bit more. And 